So let's go on to think about theories of learning. Theories, again, are not bad words. They're just organizational techniques. In this course, you will not learn as many new information pieces as you will learn ways to organize what you already know. So let me use the analogy of the way you organize the clothes in your closet. Now I've heard that there are a few closets that are so super organized that all of the shirts are hung in order, color coded from the blues to the grays to the greens. And then come all of the pants color coded, again from the blues to the grays to the greens. Then for the ladies we have the skirts or dresses and the closet is neatly organized in every area. I've heard that also some of the underwear drawers may be organized similarly, but we just won't go there. Now there's another method of organizing your closet, and that one's called the dump method. Now by the dump method, there are just as many clothes in the closet, they may be just as clean, but they're a little difficult to find, and they're especially difficult to find in order. So on that fateful day when you have a job interview, how would you rather your closet have been organized? that's easy. You'd rather it have been organized with all pieces hung neatly together. And let me tell you, it doesn't take longer to put away clothes by the organized method than by the dump method. It just takes the initial organization. Now by the dump method, if you happen to be the first person to get up in the morning and you get dressed in the dark, you may have a very difficult time finding clothes that match and they may not look as good. However, they're still all there. Now to relate your closet to the way you organize theories of learning, let's think about that fateful day, and now it's called a test instead of being an interview, when you would like to pull theories back out of your organization. So in your brain, let's think of setting up a file folder for, operation, uh, for uh, operant conditioning, I was thinking about operational definitions. And then a file folder for Piaget, and then we'll have one for Vygotsky, and then we'll have one for memory and for upper level cognitive processes. And if you organize everything you know by those theory groups, then on that day, test day, it will be much easier for you to pull information back out of your file folders in those particular theory areas. So let me think about the groups of theories that we're going to study in this course. First of all, we're going to study behaviorism. Behaviorism, composed of operant conditioning and classical conditioning, has to do with overt, measurable behaviors. We can all see the behaviors happen. Uh, they're not subjective because we all see the same examples of behaviors. They respond to reinforcements and punishments, and nobody has to argue about whether or not a behavior has happened because everyone can see it in the same way. We don't know why it happened, but we can see that it happened. Then we'll study social learning. This is a special case of operant conditioning because we'll talk about reinforcements that are social, a pat on the back, approval of another person. Social learning is more powerful still than behavior, than operant conditioning in behaviorism because social learning has to do with what other people think of you and social punishment is very damaging. Then we move to cognitive theories that talk about thought process that governs behaviors. Thought process is much more internal, it's much more subjective, and it's very difficult for one person to know absolutely the cognitive process of another person. Let me give you the analogy of having a fever and deciding how to deal with that fever. One way to deal with the fever is to take a medication that takes down the fever. But there's a problem with that because fever helps to get rid of whatever infection is causing the fever. So if you just take down the high temperature, you're going to let the bacteria or the virus grow faster. However, the fever can be so hurtful that you must take down the fever or it would do damage before you can try to find out the underlying cause of the fever. Likewise, in theories of behavior, we would rather fix the behavior but a behaviorism solution is a short-term solution because if the child is kicking his sister 
and you stop him from kicking his sister, he still feels the same emotions that cause him to kick his sister. So we might want to appeal to how he feels about his sister. We might want to appeal then to his thought process to figure out why he kicked his sister and what he might do the next time to try to keep him from kicking his sister. So what theory group is in use? I believe a combination of the theories is going to be most useful. To return to the concept of the image of God, we are so complex, having been made in God's image, that not any one theory can describe all of the behaviors that we exhibit. We must look at our behaviors, we must look at our social interactions with others, and we must look at our thought processes to figure out how and why we exhibit the behaviors that we do.